Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Today I'm going to be talking all about everything that I read in May. Welcome to my May wrap up. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Alice and I have way too many books. If it's your first time here, I have a TBR of over 200 books that I have bought and not read and I'm trying to work my way through them. May was a very good reading month. I have been participating in the 1900 to 1950 readathon hosted by Katie over at Books and Things so I will link that in the description down below. I made a video halfway through May um, to update my progress so for some of the books in this wrap up have gone into a little bit more detail elsewhere. In May I read 13 books including audiobooks. That was 10 books and 3 audiobooks. Only one of those audiobooks was a book that I started in April and therefore is not included in the 1900 to 1950 readathon. Here's a quick reminder for you of everything I read in the month of May. So I thought today I would do my wrap up a little bit differently. I've decided to talk about the books ranking from my least favourite to my most favourite and I'm going to be doing this in three categories. The first category is the okay category. These are books that I didn't love, they were fine, I didn't absolutely hate them either, I just wouldn't highly recommend them, probably wouldn't read them again. My second category is the good category. These are books that I really enjoyed and my third and best category is my favourites of the month. And that's where I'm going to talk about all of the very best books that I enjoyed most in the month of May. For every book I'm going to try to tell you something that I loved about the book or liked about the book and something that was not so good. Okay so starting off with my okay category. There were two books and one audiobook in this category and the first book I want to talk about is my least favourite of the month which is Sweet Danger by Marjorie Allingham. My favourite thing about Sweet Danger was that the climactic scene had some very good elements to it. It was very fast paced at the very end and I enjoyed some parts of that final scene. My negative with this book was that the plot was too slow and then too fast and the events in it were just a little bit too random for me. My second book in the OK category was A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. The plus side of this book, the story interested me and it kept me reading. The part that I probably enjoyed most narrative wise was the retreat. What I didn't like about this book was that the characters were really unlikable. The love interest in this book was barely there. In my opinion she was hardly sketched at all and this made it very hard for me to feel for her or the protagonist. So I wouldn't read A Farewell to Arms again but I am glad I've read it and crossed it off the TBR. Third book in the OK category is 1984 by George Orwell. I listen to this as an audiobook. I do think that in this case I might have been better off reading the physical book but I'm not sure. I usually love dystopian books and the thing that I liked about the book was I enjoyed some of the world building elements. I could really vividly picture Winston's life in minute detail. It was well thought out and there were definitely elements of it that I did like. My problem with this book was it just dragged on for what seemed like an eternity and to me it felt very repetitive. I feel like maybe I did over like 1984 but I was really disappointed by it. Okay moving on to more positive things let's go to the good category. In the good category there are two audiobooks to talk about and three physical books. To start off the good category in April I had started listening to My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyin Carbraithwaite and I didn't actually finish this book until early in May. I absolutely love the concept of My Sister the Serial Killer. I love a good book where there's a character who is a bit of an anti-protagonist, even a serial killer. I love the contrast between the two sisters, Corriday and Iola. I love the conflict and the loyalty of 
Corriday towards her younger sister. My only negative with this book was that it just didn't go as far as I thought it would with the concept. It's a really good book and I would highly recommend it. The audiobook was absolutely brilliant. It was one of those cases of an audiobook where the narrator is absolutely perfect as the main character. The second audiobook in the good category is Animal Farm and I've already talked about this in another video. I love the cyclical plot in this, the animal's slowly dawning realisation of what was happening, followed every time by the assertion that they had it worse before, and the ending was just fantastic. I really, really enjoyed this one, and it contrasted so much with 1984, which I didn't really enjoy as much. My only tiny problem with this book was that I couldn't always keep track of all the characters, which I probably would have been able to in the physical book. It's just that in the audiobook I found that there were a few too many characters to keep track of. On to the physical books in the good category. I read from the library The Lost World by Arthur Conan Doyle. It was a moderately enjoyable book all round. What I really liked about it is that there was some lovely writing in places. I liked the narrator and some of the action that happened when they were at the Lost World and I enjoyed the final twist, it made me smile. What I didn't like about the book was the, the pace was quite slow and I couldn't help but be left with the feeling that I felt like there were going to be a lot more dinosaurs in this than there actually were. But it's definitely a book that if you're interested in you should check out. It's completely different from the other Arthur Conan Doyle books that I've read but very well written nonetheless. The next book in this category is Clouds of Witness by Dorothy L. Sayers. I was reading this at the very last minute of the month during the basically readathon that I took part in last weekend. What I liked about this one is it's got a really intriguing central mystery and I enjoyed the relationship between Lord Peter Whimsey and I think it's his butler. Bunter. The thing I didn't like about the book was that the solution to the mystery didn't really satisfy me, which was a shame because there was a lot of good build-up, there was definitely a lot of good writing in this book, but I just felt a little bit let down by one particular element of the solution. The next book in the good category is The Franchise Affair by Josephine Tay. I did think about putting this in the favourites category, but it just felt a tiny tiny bit short. What I loved about this was it's very easy to read, I read it in a couple of days, it's difficult to put down, it's very well written, it has a very well thought out plot. I enjoyed the characters, they were very good and it did have a very satisfying ending, again an ending that made me smile. The plot was a little bit stranger than I'd imagined it would be and it was a tiny bit slow in places, which are the only things really keeping it from being in the absolute favourites category. Moving on into the favourites category. My first favourite of the month was The Wasteland, and I love this because I love weird poetry, and I particularly love the two main poems in the collection, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock and The Wasteland itself. Some of the other poems in the collection were weaker in comparison, and that was the only thing that I didn't particularly like about the book. It definitely had enough going for it to make it one of my favourites and I rarely read poetry so it was a lovely treat. The next book in this category was Anne of Green Gables. This has been the biggest surprise of the month. I went into the month thinking I wouldn't like Anne of Green Gables but I could not have been more wrong about this book. It's such a feel-good book and a great character to follow and my only tiny bit of negativity was that she could sometimes be a little bit annoying but somehow that formed part of her charm for me. I would definitely recommend Anne of Green Gables. I think this is an absolutely great children's classic. The next book in my favourites category is my Agatha Christie for the month. This was my very first Mary Westmacott that I had read. These are the books that Agatha Christie wrote under a pseudonym and they're not crime. And this one was called The Rose and the Yew Tree. I can't really explain what I loved so much about The Rose and the Yew Tree but I was absolutely gripped from the very start of the book. It's so intriguing and so cleverly written and it just had me interested from start to finish even though I feel like it's actually a book where not a lot actually happens. I, I can't explain it, I just love this book anyway. If you haven't picked up a Mary Westmacott yet, it's well worth a read. I haven't found any of the others yet, so I will be keeping an eye out for those when I'm buying books again. Absolutely great book. The next book in my favourites category is, is another children's classic, A Little Princess. 
I'd never read this before but I was absolutely charmed by it. I loved it. Similarly to the way I loved Anne of Green Gables actually. I loved the plot. I loved the way Sarah's story gets so sad and yet she keeps herself strong and she never changes who she is. She had the potential to be such a dislikable character because she's such a spoilt rich girl at the beginning but she never ever behaves like a spoilt rich girl and she doesn't change even when disaster befalls her. She just proves time and time again throughout the book that she is such a kind and good-hearted character. This was a lovely heartwarming book. My only negative is I didn't think this was as good as The Secret Garden which I read last year and had read as a child and there was one part of the book that I won't spoil for anybody but I found it very hard to suspend my disbelief at the hugest of coincidences that brings Sarah back to good fortune. So I did find that a little bit tricky but overall absolutely love this book. The final book in my favourites list for May is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. I also read this in the final weekend of May during the Basically Readathon and I absolutely loved this. I was expecting to because I'd had it read to me before as a child and I knew that I loved the animal characters already. But revisiting it was different than I expected. What I absolutely loved about this book was the beautiful descriptions of the countryside and the nature and I laughed so much at Mr Toad's misadventures. It was just brilliant. The only thing I didn't like about The Wind in the Willows was actually not a problem with the book, it was a problem with the audiobook. So during the 24 hour readathon at the weekend, I thought it would be great to have the option of listening to the audiobook when my eyes got tired. And I did actually already have it downloaded, ready to listen to. But I discovered when I started to listen to it that it had been quite drastically changed to make all of the characters female. So it had Lady Toad in it instead of Mr Toad and so on. Now that's fine and it's probably a very good audiobook, but that wasn't what I wanted when I wanted to listen to the original version alongside the original version. So I might listen to the audiobook at a later date, but I was a bit surprised by basically the rewrite of the story, so I haven't listened to that yet. So from the 1900 to 1950 readathon TBR that I made, the only book I didn't actually read from that TBR was Bulldog Drummond by Sapper. This has been on my shelf a very long time and I'm a bit reluctant to just put it back on the shelf but I also have got quite a lot that I want to read in June so I don't think I'm going to be getting to it anytime soon. For me it was a really really productive reading month and I was amazed at how many books I actually read. Although most of them were quite small I still felt like I was really enthusiastic about reading. I enjoyed at least some aspect of everything that I read so that was a really positive thing about the readathon. The 1900 to 1950 readathon was the first time that, that I had joined in a month long readathon like this. The first time I'd actually joined in any readathon altogether. Here's my review of it. I really enjoyed putting together my TBR for this readathon. It was great fun to look on my shelves and find what I had from this time period. And as such, I didn't really have much desire to deviate from that TBR. I do think if I was participating in future readathons that last a month I might choose only a few books for the readathon and read outside of the readathon as well but as this was my first one I thought I would enter into it wholeheartedly and read entirely from this time period and I did really enjoy myself a lot more than I thought I would. I would have to say that I think my reading material is normally quite modern books. It was the, definitely the three children's books that I enjoyed the most and I was quite pleasantly surprised by the Mary Westmacott. I think Agatha Christie's talent as a writer was still shining through even in a book that as I said not much happened in it. It was a sort of straightforward fiction. Possibly there was a bit of a romance element to it. It really wasn't the sort of book that I would normally read and that's been one of the best things about the readathon really. I think it's encouraged me to read a lot of things that I wouldn't have probably picked up for years otherwise. There was nothing that I really didn't enjoy and nothing that I didn't want to finish. So I've really enjoyed the readathon. Thank you Katie over at Books and Things for 
organising it because it really got me reading a lot of books that I didn't expect to read and didn't necessarily expect to enjoy and I feel like I've tried some real classics, certainly classics for children's literature, also some more crime classics, some dystopian classics like 1984 and Animal Farm. Yes there were certainly things that I read that I wouldn't read again but I'm pleased to have read all of them. I really enjoyed my month's reading, I'll definitely participate in a readathon again as long as I can choose my books from my own shelves and not go out buying books to do a readathon because of course the aim as always is to get through my giant TBR of over 200 books. Speaking of the TBR, here's how it's gone this month for reading from the TBR. So obviously the audiobooks that I listened to were not on the giant TBR and there were two books in this pile that I had borrowed. A Little Princess was my mum's book and The Lost World I was going to read as an ebook, but I ended up going and getting it out of the library in the end. Without further ado, let's check in with the giant TBR what has been my progress this month. I read eight books, so the TBR has gone down from 217 to 209 books. So that's very positive. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my wrap up of everything that I read in May and the 1900 to 1950 readathon. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to hear your comments down below about how you got on with the 1900 to 1950 readathon or let me know if there are any of these books that you would like to read or have read. Hopefully I'll see you again soon for another video all about books on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now! Mm -hmm.